the Mini Ion, and 400 scientists from across the globe are meeting here in London to share how they're already using it in their fields. Katie Silver has been to meet them and to also see how it works. So I'm here at this conference in East London, and it's all about this. It's a pocket DNA sequencer. So normally traditional sequencers are big, they operate in labs, big boxes. This on the other hand is completely portable, and it means it can be taken into a jungle, in the sea, even into space. It's vastly opening up the possibilities for what you can achieve with science. So I have with me here Gordon Sangera. He's the co-founder and CEO of Oxford Nanopore Technologies. So Gordon, tell me, first of all, what is DNA? So DNA, if you like, is the source code of all living systems. It comprises four bases, G, T, A, C, and that allows us to access and understand any living thing. So we might be interested in what is it? Is it diseased or healthy? Do we have a pathogen or a virus? Is it drug resistant? So accessing DNA information allows us to understand all living things. Okay, so we're gonna, you're gonna show me how this yeah. works. Okay, so, so I'll have a try. I'm just gonna yep. ask you to add this sample here okay. onto the minion. Yep. And what we're looking at here is mm. a sample of a patient who's had a hip operation, has now got a hospital post-op, hospital acquired infection. Yep and we need to very quickly understand what that infection is so we know how to treat it. Now traditional technologies take several days, maybe a week, before you can get that diagnosis back. Here, with this sample added, in real time, in the next 10 minutes, we will be able to look at what the infection is, and there are multiple pathogens there, and that allows us to have informed treatment in real time. And it's as accurate as a traditional sequencer? They're probably more accurate. The way to think about this, it's small, it's portable, it's cheap, it's accessible, it's real time. And because of many, many other features, the best analogy I can give you is you're looking at tra traditional sequencing as a black and white picture. Here you get colour, so there's richness and depth in this as well. So it adds much, much more value to the clinician who's trying to understand what is wrong with the patient. Okay, great. Now one researcher who it is helping is Sarah Stewart-Johnson. She researches Antarctica and she's at Georgetown University. So tell me, how is the sequencer helping you with your research in Antarctica? So in-situ sequencing on the Antarctic continent had never been done before and a couple of months ago we led an expedition down to the Dry Valleys, which is one of the harshest places on Earth. There's been no rainfall for two million years. The, the largest living thing is a, a midge that you can barely see. The in landscape is entirely dominated by microbes. And we were able to use a minion to get the real-time data about what the composition of those communities were. And I, I think that has the potential to completely revolutionize how we do remote field science, that so we'll know exactly what we have on our hands while we're there, instead of waiting months to get samples back into the laboratory. And knowing about these microbes, how will that help us? What does that, how does that expand our understanding? Uh, it's a great question. So we were down there testing theories of long-term cell survival, trying to figure out how life survives when it's pushed to its very limit. And I think there could be all kinds of implications for biotechnology, for being able to appropriate DNA repair pathways for medical applications. And, and I guess one of my particular interests is as a planetary scientist, the possibility of putting sequencing technology on a mission to Mars or to an icy moon of Jupiter or Saturn. Cool. Oh, thank you, Sarah. So let's come over here. Gordon, tell me, what do we know about our patient now from this couple of minutes we've had? So what, we've, what we can see here is this patient has Staphylococcus aureus. Now, if this was MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, that could be fatal to the patient because it's a drug-resistant strain. So having real-time information and then the clinician can decide that it's a superbug and therefore needs treating quickly is critical because otherwise it could be fatal for the patient. Mm, thank you. So here at this conference, there's scientists from 400 disciplines. Some are sequencing the tomato's genome, while others are looking at how to make spider silk. There's people combating Zika and Ebola, and they're all looking at how they can collaborate to make this work better for them. With all that potential from the mini ion and those 400 scientists meeting here in London.